Hello everyone, my name is Nick Sanders, and I'm the team captain of Team 10497 The Swamp Bots, and today we'll be covering the introduction to intaking principles and controlling the freight frenzy game elements. Before we get started, I'd like to go over some general recommendations for all the teams. So first off, you should join the Slick Northeast Florida Discord server. It allows you to get connected with teams from your league, and get help from the more experienced ones. You'll also have access to a bunch of helpful features that have already been incorporated into our server, such as example notebooks from award-winning teams, current season design concepts, help channels for all aspects of FTC, and automatically posted updates on the FTC forum and FTC Reddit respectively. We also recommend reading Game Manual Zero. It's the comprehensible guide for all things FTC. You can find it at gmzero.org. And also ask a bunch of questions, and then ask some more. And if you'd like to ask me some questions or get connected in the Slick Discord server, you can reach out to me through any of the contact info on the screen. So now, let's go over some of the general requirements for an intake. The first one I want to highlight is the touch it, own it philosophy. And this is basically that if your intake is touching game material, you should have full control over it. There should be no finicking, there should be no worrying about on the field. It should be a complete and entire control. And everything needs to be designed around that concept. Your intake is also going to have to be reliable, as picking up and scoring game elements is the primary method to gain points in all FTC games. Another consideration for your intake is that it's going to have many moving parts, and those are going to be very susceptible to breaking, especially at the higher RPMs required. So whatever your intake material is going to be, you're going to have to use something that's able to withstand continued use under high speeds. Most teams that use custom intakes use Lexan or polycarbonate, and some teams also 3D print their intakes or machine them out of aluminum. If you're using kit of parts components, such as rev extrusion or texture channels, you probably won't have to worry too much about this as they're already aluminum parts. And finally, your intake is generally going to extend outside of your robot frame. In this case, it's going to need to be built in such a way that it's able to withstand contact with other robots. You should always design your components with competing against other robots in mind, as contact on the game field is generally unavoidable. Blue Alliance looks like the front side of their lander with the gold minerals getting very tight now. Not a lot of space for any more minerals to go in. But looks like these robots, they're still hungry. They still got time on the board, gonna make their way to the climb with 10 seconds up on the clock. Red Alliance robots making their way up off the ground. Electric Legends are up. Blue Alliance has a robot up. We got three seconds. All four robots have made their way up with two, one. The rest of this intake video is gonna focus solely on the game elements that have been confirmed for the Freight Frenzy season. The game elements in question are these balls and cubes that have been used in the prior games of Rescue and River Ruckus. Let's cover some of the intake concepts the teams have used to handle these game elements in the past. The most dominant and recurring intake has been that of surgical tubing being rotated at very high RPMs. Some of the benefits of surgical tubing is that it has extended reach, the fact that it's able to hand differing sizes of game elements, and has been proven to be the most efficient and reliable option for many different games. Another viable intake option is that of the rubber band intake. While it is less efficient, it is easier to design, and it can also handle both balls and cubes. And it can generally be built entirely with on-hand components that you can find in a typical classroom. After countless months of testing and iteration, the FTC community has concluded that the optimal speeds at which surgical tubing should be run is around 800 to 1000 RPM for standard surgical tubing. Alternatively, you can use polyurethane tubing, which is a more rigid surgical tubing, and spin it at around 100 to 250 RPM. 
Your goal should be to use approximately the correct RPM motor that can be mechanically linked through either belts, chain, or gear to your surgical tubing axle. However, if you have a lower RPM motor, let's say a 40 to 1 gear ratio, which is around 160 RPM, you can achieve the desired RPM through a gear ratio, or you can also just use the polyurethane tubing instead. To finish this off, we're going to cover the main components of these three intakes that I and a fellow team designed in CAD during the offseason. First we have the solid mounted surgical tubing intake. It uses PLA, a 3D printed material, for all of its walls, and also 3D printed pulleys to transfer power. We used a Rev ultraplanetary motor geared 5 to 1 to power our intake tubes that are connected with this custom tube holder. The intake module is then solid mounted to a Rev rail through these slots. Next we're going to be talking about this rotating surgical tube intake. The concept is similar to the previous model in that it's surgical tube driven and it's also belt driven, but its key difference is that it's able to rotate and stow inside the robot and then extend outside at a later point. This model also uses polycarbonate or Lexan for its outside panels and PLA for its back wall and bottom plate. By moving the motor off of the intake, this design is very easy to rotate with only one servo and since it's attached to linear slides, it's able to extend past two tiles to grab materials in case there's an obstacle in next year's game. Our final intake is based more on the rescue game than Rover Ruckus. It features a fold-out front intake and then two rows of vertical surgical tubing that brings elements up a back wall. This design is driven through bevel gears in the Go Build a Channel and then transferred to the other axles through belts and 3D printed pulleys. The fold-out front intake is riding on bearings, so it can rotate independently of the axle it's riding on. I hope you learned something from today's short seminar intakes, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have on the Zoom call following this. If you'd like to learn more about intake concepts or anything related to FDC, make sure to check out Game Manual Zero and ask questions in the Slick Discord server. Thank you for your time, and let's have a great 2021 season.